observe these pictures. Here you see that each coin looks exactly the same as the other, whereas here it seems as if different coins are placed together. Similarly, what about these books? Each book here looks exactly the same as the other, whereas in this pile it seems different books are kept together. So in geometry, we use the term congruent in the sense that all measures are equal. So here, each coin looks exactly the same as the other. Here also, each book looks exactly the same as the other. And so we say they are congruent. If not, we say they are not congruent. For instance, let us say you go to a photo studio and you ask for some passport size photos. And say this is what you get. So what do you see? Each photo here looks exactly the same as the other. Or I can say that they have the sh same shape and size. So if a figure has same shape and size, I say it's congruent. I can represent congruent by this symbol. Whereas these two lines show same size and the inverted S shows the same shape. So if same shape and size, I can say they are congruent. Now let us say you asked for some stamp size photos too along with the passport size photos. So are these congruent? Clearly there is a difference in size. The stamp size photos are much smaller in size than the passport size photos and hence they are not congruent because the size is not the same. To show not congruent, I put the congruent sign and slash it above. So this shows non-congruent. Now we know that the passport size photos are congruent. We know that the passport size photos are not congruent to the stamp size photos also. But what about these stamp size photographs? Are these congruent? Well, yes they are. To convince you, what I'll do is, I'll rotate this image and place it next to this. Now you would be convinced that these are congruent because they are of the same shape and size. So what you see is that different orientations or position do not change this shape or the size and hence they are congruent. Well, you can see this with your hands too. Are your hands congruent? So what you need to see is that they are of the same shape and size. So for that, easier way would be just to put one over the other. So if these two perfectly overlap, then I can say they are congruent because the shape and size would be the same. So my hands perfectly overlap, so would have yours. So I can say that they perfectly overlap and hence they are congruent. Now what if you try to do this with your parents' hands or maybe your friends or neighbors? You would see that there will be a slight or a considerable difference in the size of the hands and hence they are not congruent. Since they would not perfectly overlap, they would not be congruent. I can apply this same concept in geometry too. If two shapes or two figures overlap perfectly, this green and red perfectly overlap, I can say that since they perfectly overlap, they are congruent. And if they do not, here you see there is a difference. They do not overlap perfectly. There is some difference in size. And so, since they do not perfectly overlap, they are not congruent. Now what about the rotations of my hand? I know that my hands are congruent, but if I change this position, if I change the position of my hand or if I rotate it, then neither the shape is changing nor the size of my hand is changing. So if the shape and size is not changing, it's congruent. So rotations are congruent. Now applying this to geometry, let's try to rotate this. So if I have this square ABCD and say I rotate it about its center, then each rotation here is congruent to each other. So all these rotations are nothing but congruent to each other. Now here I rotated about the center. It does not mean I cannot rotate about the other point. I can rotate it about any point. Let's say I rotate it about point A. So these figures too are congruent because neither the shape is changing nor the size is changing and hence they are congruent. In fact, reflections too are congruent. Try to take your hand as close as possible to a mirror. 
When you'll be exactly near the mirror, you would see that your hand will perfectly overlap with the mirror reflection. So you can say that since they perfectly overlap, reflections too are congruent. Well, applying this in geometry again, let's try to reflect this circle along a horizontal mirror. So if I reflect it, you see that these two shapes are now congruent because they are reflections. Again here, if I want to reflect this, about a vertical mirror, I can say that these two again are congruent because reflections are congruent. So now say you have a line of 5 cm length. If I ask you to draw a line of this length, you can draw it in many different ways. But you would see that the shape and size is the same, hence they are congruent. They are nothing but just different orientations or positions of this same line. So I can say that AB is congruent to CD. In fact, you can pick any two lines and say that they are congruent. What about angles? Will these two angles be congruent? When will they be congruent? If they have same, same shape and same size. So the shape is fixed because the angle is fixed. What about the size? First instance, you'll say that this is smaller in size than this and hence they are not congruent. But no, remember that the size of an angle depends on its measure and not on the length of the arms. Though this looks like it's smaller angle, but if you look at the measure, then the measure is the same and that determines the size of the angle. So the size of the angle is also the same. In fact, what you can do is you to try to see if it perfectly overlaps. You would see that the smaller angle perfectly overlaps the larger angle and hence they are congruent. In fact, if I draw angles of 45 degree in any shape or position, what you would see is that they are all congruent since the measure is the same. So for angles to be congruent, the measure of the angles should be same. So what you need to take away from this lecture is that congruent means same shape and size and this is how you represent it. If objects perfectly overlap, they are congruent. Remember your hands. Now different orientations, positions, rotations of the congruent things are also congruent and mirror reflections are also congruent.